What is up guys, Tristendo here. If you're a returning gamer or someone looking to gift a gamer in their lives and are looking to see which console is best between the PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, and Nintendo Switch, we cover that and more. Let's check it out. The biggest differentiating factors between these three consoles hardware-wise is the design and functionality. The Xbox Series X and PS5 are your standard home consoles that are boxes that plug into your TV and you operate them on your controller. Their stationary nature and big size allow for high-end next-generation graphics like ray tracing, high refresh rates, and 4K resolution. What this also means is that you can't bring the systems with you. That is where the Nintendo Switch differs. It is much weaker in terms of specs compared to the other two with an Nvidia Tegra X chip from 2015. What you sacrifice in power you get in portability. You can dock your Switch to the TV like the other two and when you want to game on the go or in the other room, you simply remove it from the dock and play wherever you go. The latest model even offers a bigger and more vibrant OLED display for better handheld gaming. Don't expect to play all the latest blockbuster AAA games on this system when compared to the PS5 and Series X. The PS5, design-wise, is the most peculiar and striking design as it looks like an art museum or an alien spaceship. The Series X plays it safe with its tall vertical matte black uniformity that screams desktop PC. Controller-wise, PS5 innovates on the traditional controller with a comfortable DualSense design that adds haptic feedback, resistive triggers, voice chat, external speakers, and multiple color options. Xbox is renowned for their controller design and perfected the gaming controller with their superior ergonomics, modularity of the control sticks, buttons on the Elite Series controllers, and compatibility with PC and other devices. Nintendo offers the widest range of compatible controllers for the Switch with the handheld Joy-Con controllers that can be played portably or be detached for home console fun. The Joy-Cons are great detached for relaxed play or you can opt for GameCube controller or Pro controller for a more traditional gaming experience, though they aren't as feature rich like the competition if you were hoping for built in voice chat or an audio jack. For the consoles overall, if you love having access to your games and on the move a lot, the Nintendo Switch's design philosophy allows for gaming anywhere and is much more flexible. If you care more for graphics and brute power and you feel like you'll be gaming stationed in the same place anyway, the PS5 and Xbox Series X are the way to go and are graphically similar in that aspect. Aside from hardware design, this is the deciding factor that I believe is the most important. The games. Consoles are pretty much nothing without compelling games to buy, and these are no different. The PlayStation 5 is very strong in their line of IPs, and in recent memory, they are the most memorable original first-party games when compared to the Xbox. The Last of Us, Spider-Man Miles Morales, Uncharted, God of War, Horizon Zero Dawn, and Ratchet and & Clank all come to mind as they are must-have games when getting the system. This, combined with the massive third-party support, means that the game's library, especially when combined with PS4s, offer games for everyone. If you love cinematic action adventure games or games that follow an intriguing narrative while also offering third-party games of different genres, then my pick is definitely PlayStation. The downsides of modern-day PlayStation is that Sony doesn't always play nice with others, often being the last to offer cross-platform online play, playing catch-up to Xbox's Game Pass, and having a hard time keeping up with demand for their systems. Xbox Series X is a very safe console, and initially the exclusive must-have games aren't present here. The only ones that come to mind are Halo, Forza, and Sea of Thieves. Series X's biggest selling point, in my opinion, is their superior service in Xbox Game Pass, which offers a library of games that aren't matched in Sony's offering of PlayStation Now. Xbox also has a future advantage that is yet to be seen, but is promising. Microsoft purchased many third-party studios that now have huge game franchises under their belt like Diablo, Overwatch, Call of Duty, Elder Scrolls, Fallout, Minecraft, Crash Bandicoot, and more. The future is yet to be seen for these titles appearing on PlayStation for the long term, which could hurt Sony's brand in the future. While PlayStation has strong first-party IP, nothing beats the king of gaming IPs like Nintendo. Only on the Nintendo Switch can you get games like Mario, The Legend of Zelda, Pokemon, Kirby, Super Smash Bros, Animal Crossing, Metroid, and the list goes on. Nintendo games focus more on the gameplay and fun aspect versus brute power and graphics, and their art style and games reflect that. Nintendo is the most traditional in terms of business mindset for video games, often releasing polished games that are sometimes considered masterpieces and reinventing the formula for existing franchises like Zelda. This business mindset is sometimes their own detriment, however. 
The Switch is woefully underpowered compared to the competition, meaning modern games going forward are seen less and less on their system as the gap between power grows. This doesn't stop the amazing games that Nintendo makes on their own system, but it does hurt third-party games. Nintendo Switch Online is also severely lacking side-by-side -side what Sony and Microsoft offer. Overall, Switch is the best for Nintendo first-party games and indie games, and it's the most versatile system. Local multiplayer is the best on this system, whereas online gaming is the best on the PS5 and Series X. When it comes to pricing, the PlayStation 5 comes in two models. The digital-only version at $399 that is slimmer and can only download games at the limited 825GB of internal SSD storage, and the PS5 Disc Edition, which sells at a more expensive $499. The Xbox Series X comes in at $499 as well, but offers a smaller, more affordable model in the Series S at $299. Keep in mind that this model can only output at 1440p HD and is digital only and sacrifices some graphical output found in its bigger brother. The Switch base model is $299, while the OLED model sits at $349. Keep in mind that these are just the retail listed prices. Due to the chip shortage, it is much harder to find the PS5 and Series X and it is easier to find them marked up by third-party sellers ranging from $600 and up. The Switch is easier to find and thus is more commonly found at normal retail price. The best console is the one that suits your needs or tastes the most. If you want a great balance of first party games, all the latest blockbuster titles and next gen power, the PlayStation 5 is a great all round pick. If next gen power combined with an affordable subscription based game pass as well as similar third party offerings is more your thing, then the Xbox Series X is your best bet. Plus it's physically much smaller than the PS5. If you travel a lot or want the option of taking your games with you and you love Nintendo games, the Switch is the perfect choice as it offers a huge range of versatility while also being the cheapest of the three consoles. Whichever you end up choosing, you will have years of happy gaming. If you guys enjoyed this content, make sure to like this video and subscribe so I can continue to make videos that I hope can help people with their tech decisions. Until next time, I'll catch you guys in the next video.